Hey everyone, it's uh, Mr. Binkley again, and we are looking at the slotted stairways section in uh, Swift Playgrounds. So this is Swift Playgrounds in the functions chapter of Learn to Code 1, slotted stairways. Uh, now it says the goal is to decompose a solution across multiple functions. So uh, it says, as you've just learned, it, it can be very useful to define a function that accomplishes a small task, then call that function within another function to accomplish an even bigger task. So when we look down here, it looks like they have a function already created for us that says collect gem turnaround. And it, it comprises of move forward, move forward, collect gem, turn left, turn left, move forward, move forward. And, you know, it even encourages us in number one to run the code to see what happens when solve row is called. And, and see, there's a second function here that says solve row, and it has collect gem turn around in it. So, you know, solve row is calling out this whole function up top here. And then down in the actual coding where we start coding in this last box, functions don't actually really do anything until they're called. So solve row is looking here, which is then looking at collect gem turn around, which is referring to the top function. So we're kind of pulling from, from two different functions again, just like in the last section. So if I run the code, let's see what happens here. So solve row is, is called and it looks to collect gem turn around. And now finally it gets to the collect gem turn around and it runs through the progression of the collect gem turn around. Now that collected the very first gem and it turned around and it got me right back to the starting location. Notice number two says, tweak the code inside solve row so that it solves a bigger chunk of the puzzle. Well, now here's the cool thing. So solve row had one collect gem turn around and it brought me right back to the beginning and I'm facing the other gem. And if we look at, if we look closely, wouldn't that be to get to the other gem, wouldn't it take a move forward, a move forward, a collect gem, and then we'd want to turn around with two turn lefts or two turn rights, but in this case we have two turn lefts and then two move forwards, which is exactly what the collect gem turnaround is. So, so really, essentially, to solve the entire row, since we kind of solved half of it, we're going to add another collect gem turnaround. And then that is going to and should uh, solve the entire row. So look, collect gem turn around, there's the first one. And now here it starts again because I just added it a second time. And so we get back to the beginning with that entire row solved. So now down in the code, you know, my thought is, all right, so that solved one row. Now all we have to do is get to the next row Okay, so I need to turn to the right. It looks like if I'm looking, I'm always putting myself in bite shoes. So I need to turn right. I'm going to have to move forward to that next tile. Now that will get me to the tile of the next row. Okay, and let's see. So I did a turn right after this and a move forward right there. All right, now I need to face either the top gem or the bottom gem. So I'm going to turn left so that I'm facing the gem up top there. And even though this one goes down and it looks a little bit different, it's still the same thing that's happening. I mean, there's two locations or two tiles until we get to the, the next gem. And then we're going to collect it. Then we're going to turn around and then we're going to move forward and come back. And since I have the solve row completing, doing that twice, essentially, this is going to take care of this entire row as well. So now all I need to do down in the code is just say solve row and it's going to collect the gem, turn around and collect the gem, turn around twice, which again is going to complete that entire row. So let's check it out. All right, so right now we are solving the first row and then we're gonna get the turn right and the move forward and the turn left right there. And now we're solving the second row. And what's nice about this is all the rows were exactly the same. And that's why we could do this and rely on solve row, taking care of the whole thing without having uh, to change or add any other functions. So now I need to do the exact same thing. I need to, uh, to get to the next row, the last row. So I'm going to turn right. I'm going to move forward. And I'm going to turn left so that I can face the top gem up there on the, uh, up the steps. And I need to just say solve row. 
and this should complete our journey on the slotted stairways section and let's see so there's the first row we're turning right moving forward turning left solving the second row and so right now we are right here and now we're going to turn right move forward turn left and now we're solving the last row which again is is pulling from these two functions up top and once we get back to the beginning there we go all of our coding has stopped and we use some decomposition to break down a larger problem into smaller. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped.